Hello kids, my name is Tom and it's fantastic to be with you today for King's Kids Online. I'm so excited that you decided to watch uh, this episode and it's very exciting for me because we've done a whole term of King's Kids Online. This is the final talk in our Exodus series. Now we've been looking at the book of Exodus and looking at the mighty rescue that happens in this awesome book. We've been seeing how God has rescued his people, the Israelites, from slavery in Egypt. And each week we've seen how they have been a little bit strange in the way that they've acted towards God. Sometimes they haven't trusted him, even though he's shown himself to be trustworthy. Sometimes they've complained, even though God continues to provide for them. And sometimes, as we looked at last week, they have rebelled. They haven't been trusting God as if he's trustworthy, but he certainly is trustworthy. And it's been awesome to think about the way that God keeps rescuing his people. Well, in our last part of the story today, we're going to be thinking about something called a covenant. Can you say that word? Covenant. It's a bit of a strange one. You may not have heard it before. If you do know what it means, maybe take a moment and tell the person next to you or have a guess. A covenant means a promise or an agreement, and usually it happens between two people. One side will promise to do something, and the other side will promise to do something, and God makes covenants a lot. He promises to do something for his people, and he hopes that his people will do something in exchange for his promise. It's like an agreement. You agree to do something and the other party agrees to do something for you. Now, God made a covenant with the Israelites when he gave them the Ten Commandments. So we looked at that a few weeks ago. He made a covenant with them where he said, I'm going to be your God and I want you to act like this, like you are my people. I want you to live my way. Well, they very quickly broke that covenant, didn't they? When they made the golden calf. How do you think God felt in that situation? How do you think he felt when his people rejected him? Well, I think I have a bit of an idea. Why don't you have a look at this video? And that might give you a bit of a sense for how God felt when his people rejected him. Breaking news, King scores, and more sent right to your cell phone. Sign up for News 10 text messaging on News 10. Now, a little uh, marriage proposal going on in midcourt right now, Jerry. I really can't imagine uh, doing that. You know, that's that's under pressure, isn't it? Well, whatever you did work because you're still married. How many yeah. years? Forty years. Forty years. So yeah. I think people ought to be asking you well, how to do it. Well, I tell you, if I'd have did it that way, I wouldn't have got. She'd have probably need me while I'm down there. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm just waiting once for the for the gal to say no. Okay. And, yeah. Oh, you, know, uh, you know that would be. Uh, well, she has to say yes there. She may say no as soon as they walk off the court. Oh, uh, I think she's saying I can't do it right now. So I, I really do like you a lot, but uh, let's just be friends. Wow, look at this. Wow. Well, how do you like that? Well, I, you know, I was just joking when I said that. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> boy, that, uh, that uh, young man uh, probably probably get over it in uh, 10, 12 years or so. Do a little prank here on uh, the night before Valentine's Day. Yeah, Tracy, enjoy that one. You know, we have, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. You've been doing this for 20 plus years. I haven't seen that one yet. Have you? No, I haven't. That, uh, <laughs> no, no, that's, uh, that's why this league, uh, it, it's amazing. Um, where, it's where amazing happens, right here. Uh, oh, man, I feel so bad for that poor guy being left all alone in that massive arena. He would have felt heartbroken and rejected and really sad. And that's how God felt when his people rejected him. But even though he could have given up on them, he decided he was not going to give up on them. He decided that he was going to keep loving them, even though they had rejected him. 
And so I want you to go and take a look at Exodus chapter 34 and read the whole thing up to verse 28. And we'll see how God makes a covenant with his people. How amazing is that passage? God decided that he was going to keep being their God, despite the fact that Israel kept rejecting him. What do you think that tells us about God's character? Well, I think it tells us that he is faithful and that he is forgiving, even though his people had been unfaithful and sinful. But you see there in the passage that God actually requires something from his people as a part of this covenant, this agreement. It was obedience. That was the agreement. God would continue to be their God. He would keep on loving them and providing for them and protecting them and rescuing them in exchange for them to try their best to live his way. He would keep being their God if they lived his way. Now, this covenant that we read about in Exodus is called the Old Covenant. And it's a covenant or an agreement that God made with his people in the Old Testament. So is there a new covenant? Well, actually, yes, there is. There is a new agreement that God has made and anyone can be a part of this new covenant. See, he made this new covenant through Jesus, where God promised that he would save anyone who would put their trust in Jesus. And in exchange, we agree to live a new life. Now, we don't live this new life because if we don't, God will reject us. But we live this new life, we live God's way because it's the best way to live. It's the best way to know God, the best way to be his friend. It's the way that God made us to be. Now, I really love this story of Exodus that we've been reading this term because it reminds me of how God rescues us as well. How he rescues us from sin, like he rescued Israel from Egypt. And how he continues to love us even when we stuff up, in the same way that he continues to love Israel even when they stuff up. And it reminds me that God has saved me to live his way. And that's so important for us to remember. Now, I thought we'd finish up our time together by praying. And so you might like to join with me as we pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for the story of Exodus and all that it teaches us about what you have done for us. We thank you for the way that you rescue us like you rescue the Israelites, that you love us like you love the Israelites, and that you care for us like you care for them. God, we pray you'd help us to live your way in this new covenant. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I have loved exploring the book of Exodus with you guys. It's been amazing. Now, I would love to invite you to come and join us for Zoom this Sunday. If you don't know how to get on, just chat to your parents and they will know how to get there. Hopefully see you then. Bye.